Okay, so we're gonna learn a little bit about your lab equipment that's gonna be in your lab drawer and also in the side cupboard. And then we're also gonna go, th go through some lab equipment that you're not gonna have in your drawer, but you will see in the lab setting. We might use maybe once or twice throughout the year. We might not use it all. It's just good to know what they are. So let's start with your drawer first because these are things that you will use all the time and you will be in charge of making sure that they are staying clean, making sure that you, if you do break one, you let me know, that kind of thing. So here we go. All right, I'll start off with a beaker. These are the easiest ones. There are many different sizes of beakers, as you can see, and there are ones that are much larger than these. Beakers are very good estimates of volume, but they are not uh, very precise. They'll give you just a very general 20 millimeters. Uh, what you'll see on a beaker is little graduations, and then in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see actually how much it can hold. So all the way to the top will be 250 milliliters on this one. A lot of times people will say to me, Ms. Butts, I only have a 200 milliliter beaker. Well, actually you have a 250, okay? They just don't go all the way up to the side. So that's, that is a beaker. Next we have Erlenmeyer flasks. Erlenmeyer flasks are very similar to beakers. Um, they have very different sizes. You're gonna have two in your drawer. They are not very exact in their volume measurements, okay? Um, they're very similar to beakers in that way. What they're really good for is if I want to put a liquid in here and I want to swirl it or shake it or mix it, it's very easy to do that by hand and it's not going to swash all over the place because they have much skinnier necks. We're going to use three main different sizes of test tubes. There are many others, but we're only going to use these three. Uh, small, medium, large. Okay. Uh, test tubes can hold all kinds of liquids, they can hold solids, kind of whatever you want them to do. Okay, uh, you can put stoppers on the top of them and get them to, you can shake them, okay, with a stopper of course on top, or you can, if you want to shake something in a test tube, you can just flick the bottom of it, and that'll kind of shake it up a little bit, or kind of go like that. So, test tube, something we're going to use all the time. Okay, graduated cylinders, graduated cylinders um, that you're going to have come in two different sizes, and um, they have different scales on them, so you got to be careful. Just because there are, goes, this one goes from 35 to 40, this one might go from 2 to 3. So you have to be very careful when you're reading these that you're using the right um, scale and that you are guessing correctly as to what your volume. Graduate cylinders often have these little um, guards on top. That's for if I accidentally knock it over, you don't break it. Okay. So if yours does not have a guard on top, be extra careful. Um, if you do knock it over, it will break. Okay, now we have a crucible and it's covered. These are little bitty guys, okay? What they are used for um, is to heat. You put them over a Bunsen burner and you can put your substance in there and you can get this very, very hot, okay? Because it is ceramic. The lid goes on top there. Next we have an evaporating dish, okay? Evaporating dishes um, are very similar to crucibles. They are ceramic. They are just used for what they sound like evaporating things. So I'll put this over a Bunsen burner, I'll have a solution, and I'll try to evaporate off um, just the liquid and leave whatever solid I had in there. I have a mortar and pestle. Okay, they are used to grind. So if I had a substance that's a little, that's in big chunks, and I want to kind of crush it, grind it up so I can put it in my beaker or whatever, that's what these are used for. Crush and grind. We have a clay triangle. Clay triangles are used over Bunsen burners. They will hold uh, crucibles. The crucible sits right in the middle there and you can heat the crucible. Okay, we also have a test tube rack. This is what holds all the test tubes. As you can see, the ones on the outside there are upside down. That's for kind of to dry them out. The side that is now closest to you is really used more to hold them. I can look at the different colors. I can kind of compare them and they're all going to be side by side. These are test tube tongs. They are used to hold test tubes over small flames. You can move test tubes if I can't touch the test tube for some reason. It's got something in it that I don't want to spill on myself. They are, all I have to do is you just push on the sides and they open. I've got wire gauze. Wire gauze is used to uh, hold evaporating dishes or other things like beakers, flasks that I want to hold over a Bunsen burner and get them to 
heat up for some reason. Okay, we'll use this a lot because that can set things on top of the flame. Forceps or tweezers, okay, used to pick up small items that I can't touch or if I want to put something in a test tube or I want to get something out of a jar, these are very handy for things that I don't want to touch. Funnel, okay, um, these are mostly used for liquids or solids that are very finely grained because the opening there is not very large. Um, they're used to transfer liquids usually um, into a container that has a smaller uh, mouth, smaller opening. You have a metal spatula, which is often used um, to transfer solids from a container, to help stir, to scrape off the bottom of a beaker. It's used for a lot of different things. You have pH paper, which helps to test the acidity or basicity of something. And it's in this little roll there. We have a scopula, which you can stir with the um, solid in a beaker. It's often used as well to get um, something out of a jar. So if I have a whole bunch of solid in a jar and I only need two grams, I'll use this. Okay, you use this a lot. a glass stirring rod. It is used to stir things in a beaker usually or a flask or whatever you're having your solution in. Um, this little rubber guy on the end is called a rubber policeman. It's used to scrape things out of beakers. It's kind of like a spatula. You can also stir with it if you would like. Um, so stirring rod, rubber, rubber policeman. Stoppers. Okay, there are many different sizes of stoppers. Some of them are one hold, some are two hold, some are for just for little test tubes. Okay, so stoppers, they have many, many different uses. Test tube brushes, you use to clean your test tubes or the beakers. Make sure your stuff always stays clean. You have a thermometer. Thermometers are for us are measured in degrees Celsius. And all all of ours I think are blue. And so then you read the temperature on there. I have a triangle file, which is used to help cut glass or put little um, like scratch marks in um, glass. So for us, we're going to use it for cutting pieces of pennies later on in the year. So triangle file, kind of like a big nail file. We also have a watch glass. Uh, these are used sometimes when I heat something up. I'll put a little bit on the watch glass. Sometimes if you want to just um, hold something for a while. There are watch glasses here. And we also have crucible tongs, which are very useful to hold crucibles. That's why they have a little in the middle there that will fit an actual crucible. Or I could use them to just pick up things and move them around. They're very handy. You will also have matches in your drawer. All right, now we're gonna talk about all these items that are in your side cupboard. So your drawer is your drawer. That's you and your partner and that's it. No other class period. The side cupboard you will share with anyone in another period who uses this lab table. So here we go. You have a ring stand. You use this for many different kinds of setups, usually with a Bunsen burner. Um, it, you can put any, have any type of clamps on here and get different things at different heights. I have a ring clamp, okay, which is something you'll use all the time. You'll often put a wire gauze on top of it. Sometimes you'll put the pipe stem triangles with clay triangles on top of it. And then they clamp right onto the ring stand. You also have what's called a utility clamp, which can hold test tubes, thermometers, um, anything else that you want to put over a flame usually, or if you want to put something in a water bath, you use the clamp and then it clamps as well right on to the ring stand. You have a Bunsen burner and tubing. Bunsen burners you will look a lot more at in your lab tasks. Um, as how to use these, but this is our main source of fire. <laughs> Lighting a Bunsen burner. These take these uh, strikers or flint lighters. Okay, um, they are just used to light the burner. And we'll talk more about ways that people just use these or abuse these later. These are lighters or flint lighters, strikers. Beaker tongs used to move larger items. Um, Unlike the crucible tongue, which is for smaller things, um, this is used for beakers, okay, especially if they're hot and you want to grab them, okay, beaker tongs. Ceramic square 
is used to hold hotter items. It's how they get the burn marks in them, but it's sometimes better than putting on the lab table, but the lab tables are usually pretty sturdy as well. And then we have our water trough, which is usually used for gas collection labs, or if I need an ice bath, um, these are useful for that. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is going to be things that you might encounter once or twice um, in a lab setting throughout the year, or maybe not at all. There's kind of things that are nice for you to know, but you won't. These are usually the more expensive items in a couple of cases, or um, things that we're going to share. Okay. So here we go. We're going to look at a biometric pipette. All right. Um, these come in different sizes, different volumes. Okay, this one's a 25 milliliter, means that this one holds exactly 25 milliliters. Um, what you do is you use the pipette bulb. Okay, it goes over top. You suck up the liquid. There's a line here that you cannot go past. And then once I get all the liquid in here up to this line, then I can just dispense just 25 millimeters exactly into my beaker or flask or whatever I'm using. They're very, very precise. They're very expensive. I also have what's called a volumetric flask, and we will use these throughout the year. Um, they hold very specific volumes. This one is a 250 milliliter one. It's very similar to the pipette. There was a line on it. And when you fill up with that much solution right there, that's exactly 250 milliliters. What you do is you make solutions of different concentrations in these and they hold them. They are very precise and expensive. We have a burette, which has lots and lots of little graduations on it. And then down here at the bottom, it has what's called a stopcock. Um, what happens with these is you will dispense a certain amount of liquid into a beaker or a flask, and they are often used for what are called titrations. On well, order to a burette, um, you have what's called a burette clamp, and the burette fits right inside, and that way you don't have to worry about holding onto it. We have what's called a Florence flask. Um, this is not something you're going to use very often. It's kind of like a beaker or an Erlenmeyer, um, just in different shape. We have a distilled water bottle or a DI water bottle. The water in these is not tap water. They have to be filled up in one of the two DI water uh, jugs on the side of the room. So do not put tap water in these. This is called a reaction plate. Okay. And what you will notice is they have a whole bunch of little what are called wells. Okay. And that way you can see lots of different reactions all at once. You can compare them. They just are going to be very big solutions. We will use these a few times throughout the year. Weighing dishes, you will put uh, your substance, your solid, in here and then weigh it on the balance. These are used to hold them. They are disposable, so you use it once, pitch it. Same thing with these. These are just called regular pipettes. They are like the volumetric pipettes, but a lot cheaper. Um, they have some, some of them have little graduation marks on them. They are disposable. Use it once, throw it away. You will also be using an electronic balance, which will measure the mass of substances. And of course, you need goggles to protect your pretty little eyes.